Well, back in the game with Brother Lawrence. <laughs> so for the people who, how do I even start this? We had a conversation earlier today, a civil conversation, a civil disagreement um, about, about this stimulus money. And so after talking to you, I realized, well, maybe I need a different perspective because as a not parent, maybe I'm not qualified enough to, to, to really, really dig in. So I brought in a hitter. Uh, say hello to our, our favorite leather mermaid, Leticia. Um, Why are you laughing? And her, and her team of expert helpers that some people call children. Now, I just want to lay out what I think and what, I, what we were talking about to make sure that we're all on the same page. No, you cannot hit that while I'm on this. Take it in the back. <laughs> and everybody who watches here knows children are welcome. Um, we were talking about the stimulus package, and I said that $1,200 for a family in the United States was an insult. That giving people that much money per month to take care of a mom, a dad, and what did we say, two children, was woefully inadequate. Okay. And um, I want to say hello to Felicia. Welcome to the team. Make sure you share this somewhere on your Facebook or, or your Twitter, because this is how we get to meet new people. And we're looking forward to your input, too. I said 1,200 was way inadequate. And you jumped right on my case and said, no. If people knew what they were doing with the money and the food, 1,200 could feed a family of four for more than a month. And I said, well, who do I know that could also be an expert at parenting to give me some perspective? I said, well, let, let me call Tisha. And we had a bit of a chat on it, and she seemed to lean more towards my side of, you know, a more conservative view of that money. I don't think that you could adequately feed a family, a mother, a father, and two children, let's say a 12-year-old and a 14-year-old, on 1,200 in the United States right now. You laid out a very different game plan. And Tisha, I want you to, to, to listen to this and tell me what you think, because I have my own personal biases in this equation that he began to lay out, but I also have some questions I want to ask afterwards. Go ahead, Lawrence. I said, this is me. I live with a teenage daughter, so I'm feeding two. And my grocery bill, generally, is 50 bucks every two weeks. So... Yes, I, I know. I know. It seems very, very, very light, but I have a very simple and easy budget. It consists of primarily, I'm going to say about seven ingredients. But with those seven ingredients, with addition to you know other things, I can feed. I can comfortably feed myself and my dog comfortably for fifty bucks, maybe sixty bucks. Every two weeks. This isn't including McDonald's. We're not including Frosted Flake cereal. We're talking about survival now. We're not talking about luxuries. We're talking about survival. So give give us an average breakfast, lunch, and dinner on a weekday and a weekend day on twenty five dollars a week. For both you and breakfast. Both for breakfast, oatmeal and sugar, right? Grits for breakfast, grits and sugar, grits and butter. Grits and salt, right? That's two breakfast options. You can alternate every other day, right? A big thing of oatmeal, what's that going to cost you? Three bucks. A big thing of, of grits is going to cost you, what, two bucks? That's five bucks. You got you have breakfast covered for the whole family for the week. For five so that's bucks. no protein. No protein, right? There's no eggs. There's no... Wait, 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 wait. If you were having cereal and milk, would there be a protein with it? If you're going to have... Like, milk. Milk. Wait, wait, milk. Average has frosted flakes and milk. Where's the protein? Milk has protein, sir. Okay. You don't put milk in your grits, milk in your oatmeal? You can? You cannot? Okay, okay but let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's talk about lunch. Keep going. Bread, a loaf of bread, it costs you a dollar to buy 
peanut butter and jelly? What's that? Four dollars for a thing of peanut butter, two dollars for a thing of jelly, right? What do we got here? Four dollars, three dollars, and a dollar. What's that? Four, three, seven, eight, eight, eight plus five. That's thirteen dollars. You have every lunch and every breakfast covered for the week, right? For one week, right? These these are options. This is we're talking survival. We're talking survival. And they're drinking, and they're drinking water for lunch. 50 pound bag of rice is gonna cost you 50 bucks. Right? 50 pound bag of rice, right? Oil is gonna cost you what? A thing of oil is gonna cost you, I don't know, maybe six or seven bucks. And a thing of chicken, a family pack of chicken, it's gonna cost you eight bucks at the average supermarket. A family pack. Let's call it 12 bucks for this conversation. That's not enough to, and you can fill in the vegetables from there. My family said, just on that. Now, obviously, you're not going to eat oatmeal every day. You're not going to eat oatmeal every day. You're not going to eat uh, 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 cream of wheat every day. You're not going to eat grits every day. But these are different options that you have. So week one, you get oatmeal. Week two, you get cream of wheat. Week three, you get grits. By the end of the month, you've got a certain amount of variety. And I, I think this is... This is, this is just from my perspective. You can absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, feed a family for what? what what's, what's the same? It's 1200 $1, bucks for a month. Easily. I can feed my family for six months. Let me get a couple small questions. One, you're saying there's not going to be, they're drinking water. Uh, are we talking survival or are we talking luxury here? I'm talking about the average American family that's going to get 1200 bucks a month to maintain. At least a civil, because, okay, if we went to inmate rations or if I was in, I don't know, basic training for an elite level of the military unit, of course you can eat that all the time. But, Letitia, I, I, before, before I, I don't want to dominate the microphone, your a picture says a thousand words and your face is, is priceless right now. Please. Look, I was listening because, first of all, my background, not only is just because I'm an average mom, I have a culinary degree and a nutrition background. And what you, the, the initial question was, what, what would be comfortable? What would be nutritious? And you're talking about survival. So even when you're saying the things that you're saying people survive on, that doesn't have enough nutrition in it to maintain I'm glad you said that because I can I please interject here. What would you add to what I said that would make my meals more nutritious? What would you add? I mean, there's there's definitely countries where beans and rice are part of every meal. Beans have protein. It's much easier to have vegetable protein than it is meat. It it keeps longer. If we're talking about prepping rations, that's different. But the original question wasn't about prepping rations. It was about feeding your family comfortably for a month. That's not healthy. That menu that you laid out is not healthy. I, I hear what you're saying, but I would need you, because I was very specific as to what I would start my cupboard with. What is my cupboard missing? That is a very specific question. What am I missing? And can I fill those things in and be under 50 bucks? That's the question. It, this is a math problem. It really depends on where you get your groceries. No, and no, if you have access to food. What am I missing? That's very say, specific. Say, what am I um, one thing you can add is dried vegetables. You can add frozen vegetables. They're like a dollar a bag. You can exactly. add frozen fruit, two or three dollars a bag. But exactly. it depends on if you know how to cook or not. Most of these folks do not know how to do that thing. But but you just you just you're just contributing to my point. So the things that I were missing were frozen vegetables, which cost a dollar a bag. I'm still under budget. My budget was like thirty five bucks on all the stuff I just mentioned, and for another fifteen bucks, you're right. I can add some frozen vegetables. I can add some some fruits to it to make it more nutritious and more healthy. But again. You're, you're, you're just proving my point because all the things that I would need are readily available 
and cheek. So let me show you something that I just pulled up. And I want to see if we're meeting certain benchmarks. Because again, even prisoners have benchmarks for nutrition. Are you telling me that what you're laying out is going to get your average 10, 12-year-old boy or 13 to 15-year-old boy per day 2,200 calories or 2,500 calories? A girl, 20,000 calories to 2,100 calories. You're telling me that what you lay out is going to hit these benchmarks. Because I don't see it in what you laid out. I don't see a boy who is 13 years old getting 2,450 calories or more out of grits for breakfast, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for lunch. And what did you say for dinner? A chicken thigh and what else? Rice. Chicken, chicken uh, rice, and a vegetable of your choice. Okay. Right. And, with, and with this breakdown of protein, fat, calcium, iron, do you, do you see that in the diet you laid out? Because I don't. I mean, we could go to food calculators, but I don't see that. I also, I mean, I'm people know I'm not a peanut person. I'm not a peanut peanut butter person. But PB and jelly sandwiches, how often can you do that? For I, I, I personally do it very often, but you don't have to do PB and J. It could be a some kind of a lunch meat sandwich. I don't particularly like lunch meat. My daughter doesn't particularly like lunch meat. We tend to do peanut butter and jelly, but it's up to you. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying to you is. You can argue my point, but you... If you add meat, it's going to cost you more. Lunch meat is more expensive than chicken. Even like those family packs, it's way more expensive than chicken. Even the cheap stuff. Well, I don't know. So, I mean, that's that's not that's not a that's not a the hurdle that I I personally cross because neither myself nor my daughter eat lunch. Meat. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. I just thought about something. You you just said that you and your daughter don't eat lunch meat. If I'm not mistaken, does your isn't your daughter a vegetarian? She was a vegetarian for a very. She was a vegetarian for six years. I'm going to say in the last month she started eating meat, but we still keep Whoa. a lot of vegetarian principles. So so, so what, what you're telling me is that you didn't even have to worry about meat for anybody but you under that 1,200 budget that we're imagining imagining. No, no. Under excuse me, under my fifty to sixty dollar budget, we only had to worry about me. Twelve hundred hasn't even entered the room for me. We're just talking about food now, and I, I I get the same reaction. I get the same reaction every time I have this conversation with you guys and my coworkers. But I can take you down to my kitchen right now. You've seen a picture of my cupboards. What? You've seen a picture of my cupboards. I'm. This is real. This is how I live. My, yeah, my, but my daughter is. She's downstairs eating right now. We eat a lot of beans. We eat a lot of rice. We eat a lot of fresh vegetables, and we're way under budget every time. So I mean, it's a math problem. It, it really is a math problem. What can you? What gives you the most bang for the buck? Generally, if you're talking about food, if you want the foods that give you the most bang for the buck, it's going to be rice, potatoes, carrots oatmeal. If you have a certain amount of carrots, rice, potatoes, oatmeal, and cabbage at any of your meals, you're going to be under budget. You can go on You can go on YouTube right now. How to feed a family of five on 40 bucks a week. How to feed a family of six off of $200 for the month. You, you're going to see a hundred of these videos. So I'm not by myself. It's well, just, well, wait, hold on. I, here's the thing. I agree that you see these videos, but no one says that these videos are giving us an accurate description of a healthy layout of meals because the calorie count that I'm looking at from what you're saying, first of all, the ratios, you're, you're telling us just to buy 1200 bucks or less a month and just do it. Nothing but carb and sugar city, sugar in your oatmeal, sugar in your waffles, peanut butter and jelly for lunch. No, that's not what I'm saying. That's not, what we're being forced to look at? That's what the people who don't have are being forced to look at right now? No, no, that's not what I'm saying. No, that's not what I'm saying. And the the, I think the goalpost is being changed a little bit. here. You're talking about a healthy diet, blah, blah, blah. We were talking about starving earlier. You were like, hey, a fit, you're, you're going to starve if you feed your, your kid 50 bucks a month. And I'm saying, no, I, I'm far from starving. I'm health. I'm fat. My daughter's not overweight, but I'm fat. I eat yeah, but okay. 
Well, let me do this. Do I have your permission to share the pictures of your pantry that you shared with me? You have. You had. You do have permission to share the pictures of my pantry. Okay. Now let's look at this. You're rocking name brand Hershey cocoa. Yes. Name brand, what is that dip over there? Name brand grits. You've got an assortment of, what are those addition flavors to different, uh, you add them to the water to make them taste better? Yes. Yeah, those aren't cheap. They're, they're $3. Them, you know, they're, I'm, I'm looking in here, I don't see a dollar store kitchen. Do you, Letitia? Mm -mm. It's not a I dollar store but you, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. You're, you're, you're looking at it saying, in one month, I can't buy everything in that cabinet. But over the course of 12 months, you can have everything that I have in this kitchen. I agree with you. But when you go from having a regular salary, a regular, whatever regular is for a family, to dropping down to 1200 per month, and we're going to go past food in a minute here, but I want to stay on food for the moment. You're telling me that they can do that? That the family who was doing that before can do that now? No, you can't. You can't tell them. And here's the thing. Those are not luxury items. Hershey Cocoa and name brand ch uh, chip dip is not a luxury item. I can say that, and I will say that, and I'm standing behind it. You can you come disagree with me, because because I'm doing it, so I know I can do it. I'm, and what I'm, was I'm, the answer beforehand? Look at this stuff. You're telling me that you can, you'll still be able to have. If this is part of your lifestyle now, you're telling me that's part of your lifestyle on twelve hundred a month? No, it's not. I'm not saying off of twelve hundred a month. You're I'm saying. saying you're saying you can't maintain the standard of thing you did, even at a healthy level. At Can I ask you a question? Listen to me before you disagree. I, I have all the Oh, Lauren, she's been kind enough to not talk over us. So whenever she wants the microphone, we're going to give it to her. Go ahead. I just want to ask a question. So are we talking about the $1,200 just for groceries or $1,200 living expenses? Because that's all anybody's getting is $1,200 once. Well, what we, what we, how we, how we couched it earlier was there's provisions in these policies that you don't have to pay. You're not worried about your rent at least for the next month. You're not worried about the electric getting cut off for the next month, and you're not worried about your utilities for the next month. You're worried about your. That's cell phone. not across the board. That's that's what they say. I, I don't know. I don't know. Just. And he said, you know, twelve hundred dollars couldn't feed a family for a month. And I'm saying, a family could live very well off of twelve hundred. I think your definition of very well is skewed, sir. Very well, that's skewed. Because here's I, I, again, I, I come from a cooking background as well. I used to be a professional chef with a with a chef's medallion. I'm not a professional nutritionist, although I'm trained in nutrition as well. I can tell you, shoveling a few scoops of sugar every morning into the grits and a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, your children may be able to eat, but that's not, here's what I believe. I believe you're telling the truth. What I'm saying is it's an insult to believe that at 1200 bucks a month that anyone could lead a healthy lifestyle that they would not be ashamed to feed their children on 1200 a month. No one wants that for their family. No one wants to say you're going to eat beans, rice, and a chicken leg, which is gulag food. Men who are locked up get better than that. And I now got cousins in time. Now you're talking about shame and impressing other people. I'm talking no. about. I'm, I'm not talking about, about impressing nobody. Tell them the truth. <laughs> I, I, look, so first, firstly, that's making an assumption that nobody said anything about. Like, I live way out in the mountains, away from anybody. I'm not trying to impress anybody with what's in my pantry. That's ridiculous. I have a toddler and an 11-year-old. So if you go from eating one thing, like whatever they're used to eating, how are you going to reduce that and force feed your children this? I mean, okay, yeah. You can say, you're, gonna, you're not going to eat until you eat the stuff that I got. And that might work after a minute, but like we're that's like that's still like cruel and unusual punishment for children that are used to a standard of living. Are you comfortable saying that, that it's okay to eat those things and they're going to knowing that they're not going to give your children nutrients? We're not talking about grown men who can just live the hard way. I'm saying you're comfortable saying that twelve hundred a month might put a bunch of carbs, a bunch of cheap carbs in their stomach every day, but it's in no way going to give them the nutrients that they need. 
I make the list too. I cook probably four times a week. Even four times a week. Four times a week. I cook four times a week with a combination of rice, beans, Hi. It's not good. No, don't do that. Lawrence, hold on. Hold on. You're being upstaged. Hold on. Hold on. You're being upstaged. Are okay. you done now? No, not yet. You're not yet done. Daisy, sir. No, go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lawrence, now you can come back. <laughs> what I'm saying is, I make delicious food all the time. For you, it's you you're 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 I, I guess you're low-key insulting me saying it's gulag food by saying, hey, rice is not healthy for you, so you shouldn't eat rice. Beans no. aren't good for you. I'm saying, I'm saying I cook delicious food. I cook delicious food for my kids. For my my child that's what I'm saying different. is that there is no nutritional variety. You're, you're, wait, wait, come on, come on. Let me let me speak before you disagree with me. Please disagree after after you hear what I have to say. Okay. I have a combination of rice. I have a combination of starch, vegetable, beans, and protein pretty much with every meal. Excuse me, with every dinner, with every dinner meal. I don't have protein every breakfast, and I tend to eat peanut butter and jelly for lunch, me and my daughter. That is, it is what it is. To say that it's gulag food or it's not healthy, I think you're, you're, you're making a very big presumption. You're making a very, very big presumption. Extremely big, and I, I think it's unfair. It's not a presumption to say that there is not enough nutritional diversity, particularly if you're saying this is what we're going to. You're, you're, there is no such thing as bad food, only over and under consumption. Yes, it's hard to overconsume vegetable. That's probably not going to happen. But when you're telling me that you're looking at either Quaker oats or oatmeal for breakfast, and a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or some variation of lunch meat for lunch, that's not a that's not a meal that you would want to feed someone that you expect to have enough nutritional diversity to thrive. So what is the average American kid eating for breakfast? Once you disagree with me, what is the average American kid eating for breakfast? A bowl of cereal? I challenge, I, I, I challenge you to say that it's anything other than a bowl of cereal. So what I'm offering my kid is essentially the average breakfast for the average American. Please disagree with me. I, 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 am I the only one that grew up with full breakfast with eggs and toast and OJ? Is that just me? I'm sorry. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know your name. What, what's your uh, the lady? Uh, I'm sorry. Letitia. 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 So, so. Well, I mean, Cross. <laughs> I know you. You're a stay at home mom. You're home with your kids all day. So you, you, you. Oh, honey, no. I'm not a stay at home mom. I'm a work from home mom. Thank. <laughs> work from home. <laughs> You cook a full breakfast for your kids every day? Mm hmm And do you think that's the exception or the rule? I mean, I've structured my life this way purposefully, so it's probably the exception. Okay. Okay. That, I'm going to say it absolutely is the exception. Oh, and for the people who haven't seen before, if anybody wants to uh, do some time travel with us, I want to show everybody because – uh, Letitia is somebody who gets to come by a lot. She lives in a tiny house, meaning how many square meters is your house? A meters, I don't know, but it's 290 square feet. She lives in a tiny house, which is a thing, and she homeschooled and has become extraordinarily um, uh, sought after because now homeschooling, people are coming to her for all the advice. We did an article called Homeschool Havoc, she laid out for people some of the things that they need to homeschool resources. Um, she debuted an amazing leather corset for us that day. So I want everybody to go watch and leave appropriate comments. What? Thank you. You can have it. You can have it. You said, you said, you said that, Mommy, can you? that some people are getting home relief. Some people are getting relief from their mortgage. That 1200 whether or not you live in a situation where you got to pay the rent or the mortgage, let's say that's gone. 
Uh, hey, RJ, you know what? For the people who weren't here earlier, the reason that RJ is saying hello again, he and I had a, a real serious, uh, fun, and in-depth conversation a little earlier that I hope everybody gets a chance to look at. And he's a credit expert. He's got letters behind his name. I'll show everybody the link if you want to. If you want to go check it out, it's under the the Patreon page. I'll give everybody more inf info on that later. But it was called Credit Killer Quarantine, and we had um, we really went there. We really went there, and I hope everybody gets a chance to to check this out and, and say hello to RJ. Because when we get back to this, what I want to do is I want to go back and I want to talk about. If this is not by the, there you go, Credit Killer Quarantine. It's on the Patreon now, and I'll make sure everybody gets a link to it in the comments. If your rent is paid off, your mortgage is paid. This doesn't include how do I wash my children's clothes? How do I buy shaving equipment so that I look decent when I do go to the job that may or may not be paying me? How do I, because these things are not luxuries. These are things that the fundamental, that fundamentally you just need. Let's not even talk about bus fare to work if you can do that, if you still have a job. That 1200 I mean, are we going to make an argument that you can feed yourself and wash yourself on that? Are we going to make an argument that you could buy, I don't know, luxury items like double-ply toilet paper? I, I, I'm just throwing that out there. I, for either one of you, I don't think that's, I, I, again, I don't think that's a reasonable statement to say that 1200 is going to help somebody because we got to remember, anyone who qualifies for that 1200 isn't at top of the food chain wages. They're making less than living wage. Lawrence? Well, um, I, I can't speak on that because that's not a category that I fall into. But I can tell you, in feeding me and my daughter, I can do it less than $65 a month. $50 on most months, less than $65 on the top end. Period. Okay. That's okay. That's and nutritious. You're you're pushing me with that nutritious word. Okay. Well, challenge challenge me. Get your challenge on. I I I'm I'm all up for this. I'm all up for this debate. The problem I'm having is that are you arguing that you're going to give the nutritional, I wouldn't know, let's say the nutritional guidelines that we looked at earlier for giving someone a balanced nutritional meals. With, I'm not talking about the average American. Let's just say, let's just say you're right. Let's I, I, say I, that you can feed someone that stuff. Hey, what? what how, about, how about we take it back like 10 steps? What did you eat for, what did you eat for breakfast today? You're, you're a big eater. You eat a lot of meat. What did you personally eat today? Oh, hold on. I'll show you because my breakfast will also be my snack. Hold on a minute. Okay. As you listen to me, open the refrigerator. My breakfast consisted of a banana, which I'll have another one later, an orange. By the way, did you guys know that oranges are actually this color when they're not treated with certain chemicals? Here in Brazil, they just come from the farm. I had no idea until I actually had a fresh orange that the farmer touched that morning. And then if I'm feeling especially frosty this evening and I need a little extra boost, I'm going to take the other half of this. And I've got a couple options. Maybe I'll mix it with some onions, garlic, and tomato and go with a, a, a guacamole and uh, some banana chips or something. Or I'll do something distinctly Brazilian, mix it with a little bit of milk and, and um, sugar-free sugar and make a shake. Okay. Can we stop right there? Quickly pause. Let's pause right there for just one second, right? Okay. You know, bananas are 59 cents a pound. At least they are here in, in Maryland. 59 cents a pound. I get a bundle of bananas for, I don't know, for $3, right? That's breakfast for a couple days for you. Big, big, strong Yusef Watif, right? Yeah. With an avocado, is how much? With half an avocado, a full avocado here in Maryland is, I don't know, maybe $2, $3. 
maybe four dollars on you know when they're out of season or whatever. Okay, so we're talking two dollars for the half of avocado. We're gonna say twenty five cents for the banana, and how much for an orange? Another twenty five cents. Oh yeah, I'm I'm I, I, I can work out breakfast for for my family of five, eating what you ate for breakfast. I I, okay. I can work that get into my budget. What you have for lunch? My lunch is going to consist of around 12 to 15 ounces of chicken or 8 to 10 of beef. Okay. So let's just go with the chicken because chicken is cheap. Beef isn't, right? The, the, same, <laughs> fish, the same, same $8 50 pack of chicken that we talked about earlier today, I can, I can feed my whole family for a couple of days off the family pack of chicken. Make, prove me wrong. It's a math problem. I'm winning this argument, guys. You know I, what? I, I, I actually I say that if I someone is willing to give their children only the, and again, we're not talking about nutritional diversity. We're talking about your children eating Stop. the same rice, beans, and a chicken leg, and maybe oh, some oh. breakfast. That's that's a hard. Oh, that's what, I'm what I'm saying to the conversation, and I'm saying. Just like we talked about, talked about earlier, I buy three different kinds of rice, right? I buy basmati rice, black rice, and sticky white rice, right? And I can serve those three different kinds of rice, three each of them three different kinds of ways. So that means I have nine I, nine options just for the rice dish. Not that I'm going to have rice every day, but each of these fifty pounds of fifty pound bags of rice costs twenty dollars. So let's just say I buy one one week, one the next week, and one the next week. Now I have Nine different options of just rice, right? But now, you know what? I don't want to have rice every day, so I'm going to buy some potatoes. So between the rice and the potatoes, I have my starch covered for several days, and everybody knows potatoes are cheap. You're right. I'm not going to have beef every day on a tight budget. I'm going to mostly, most likely have chicken. I'm going to have chicken all. I'm going to have roasted chicken. I'm going to have pan-fried chicken. I'm going to have baked chicken. But it's going to be mostly chicken, just being honest. It's going to be mostly cheap on a tight budget. It's not going to be a lot of beef. And I and I will I will say that you know what it it would be better to have a little bit more beef in my diet in diets. But I don't eat a lot of beef. So again, this is a math problem. And I think I'm presenting what I feel like is a compelling argument that it it still doesn't cost that much. You're still not proving me wrong. You what you're saying is it's not going to be healthy. It's not going to be diverse enough. But how many different ways can you make chicken? It's it's thousands. There, there's thousands of different ways you can make chicken. So I, I don't understand. Like, where, where is the lack of diversity? Lauren, so there are thousands of ways to make chicken, but you need the spices and other things to mix with it. It's like tofu. It's like an average protein source. It doesn't have its own natural flavor. To do any of those other interesting, exciting things, you need way more ingredients. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying, but. You're saying you don't get what I'm saying. Oh. You need, I mean, do you know how much spices cost? None of that stuff that you said, you're assuming that people have like you in order to make all those different dishes to make it palatable. I mean, my spice rack is extensive, but I've, it took me a while to collect all that stuff. If all you're hey. doing is just making, you can, you can make baked chicken. If you have butter, butter is more expensive than you think to cook it in. I mean, the spices and flavorings, if you were going to make something edible enough for somebody that's used to eating actual food with flavor in it, the spices and stuff will put you over your budget alone. Okay, so I just want to make sure, because what I think I hear you saying is you bought all your spices last month. That's what I think I hear you saying. Because No, I got that's not what, I didn't say I bought them all last month. I bought my spices over a long period of time, just like you did. So to say that the spices are going to put you over the top is kind of disingenuous because I have a bunch of spices and I didn't buy all of them last month. I bought some this. I'm going to buy some this month and I'm going to buy some next month. So that's that's kind of a faulty argument. In my opinion. OK, well, but my other question, then let's 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 look at it this way. Let's say I concede to you that it's totally possible you're going to go with your cooking plan and boom. But my other question to you is this, that 1200 now are we saying that 1200 includes anything besides food? Because remember, that's all they're getting. By the way, does anybody in the comments know whether or not um, 
Does anybody in the comments know whether or not they're getting other government aid? Does this go on top of your government aid? Um, or does this not? I mean, I don't know how that works. If you're already getting any kind of government assistance, does this allow you to get on top of it? Or, or, or is it just... Does anybody know or can anybody give me a, any kind of indication? Um, hold on a second. BK from the Rockies has a question. He says, are we basing the costs and diet based off healthy living or more of co off cost? Cost by expenses will take the diet of folks just very financially make it, in my opinion. I think he's saying something that we've, that, that, that we've agreed on that we're not talking about anything other than this is the cost and this is how much it's going to cost to get you from here to there appropriately this is what it's going to cost to feed not necessarily to feed you know in a functional fun way but you're not going to die you're not going to starve this is what i'm going to say i can go to whole foods and spend twice as much on the food that i get and get organic foods and i guess technically more healthy foods but that's not what i do sometimes i go to whole foods but most times i don't if i want something very specific i'll spend them i'll spend the extra money but again, we, we kind of veered off from the example I was using you, big and strong. Okay. You said you have for dinner. Because what you've what you've had so far for your breakfast and your lunch, you're falling within my budget. I just want to put that out there. Well, so you're you're cutting out any any protein source that's not a um that's not a, a, a chicken. So you're hamstringing me right there. So that means when I get that 16 out slice of um light slice of deboned salmon that's just out of the question right that's just a no that's a non-starter for your house there's no fish there is no fresh fish there is fish once in a while i'm not a big fish guy neither is my daughter we eat most nine times out of ten we're gonna eat chicken the times we don't eat chicken it's usually a little bit of beef and specifically shrimp ironically ironically it's true i don't know why that is it, that's just the way. It is. Well, I mean, hey, if that's if that's how you get down at your house, I'm saying for me, it's one of those. Um, you know, I like a big slab of what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of butter in a pan, some rosemary, some salt, and a bunch of vegetables, and then I'll take that slab after the vegetables are sautéed. I'll take the entire slab of of um, of uh, salmon and put it directly on top with a cover and let that just simmer and steam, you know? Uh, but what you're saying then is if I look at, hold on a second. Yeah, so this is totally out of the question, right? That's not an option. It, it depends on what you want. To, it depends on what type of variety you want. You can have anything you want. You can have anything you want on your menu. It just means you're gonna have to cut corners somewhere else. If that's if that's the protein you want, but you that's want what I'm trying to get to. The corners that you're going to have to cut are what toilet paper and diapers. The corner you're going to have to cut is what I'm drinking water every day, and I can't afford milk. First off, we're only talking about food. We're talking okay. about food. We're not talking about toilet paper. We're not talking okay. about diapers. We're talking about food. Our conversation earlier today was about a food budget. We are only talking food. So, what did you have for dinner? Today, I'm thinking Hawaiian style show you show you chicken. So chicken, so you had yeah. chicken for lunch and chicken for dinner. What about well, what about rare. yeah the variety? Hmm. Oh, hold on a second. I need to I, I need to because I'm looking behind Letitia. And I'm looking at the the child demanding attention. Do you need to go, mom, a little bit because I would hate to keep you here if if the kid needed you. Well, you guys are talking about food, so he's been saying he wants cereal, he wants a snack, he wants everything. He won't leave me alone because you guys have been talking about snacks for like fifteen minutes. <laughs> so I keep muting my camera because he's like trying. To, I mean, I live in a tiny house. He's like climbing in the pantry, pulling stuff out. Bringing it over here, showing it to me. I want a snack. I want cereal. I want this. I want that. I was like, okay, well, it'll be so nice if I get a quiet conversation. Even if he wasn't hungry before, if he heard us say the word cereal, he suddenly wants it now. 
Oh my goodness, did y'all hear that? I said the word and he said it in the background. He wants rainbow cereal right now. Oh, well, he wants that good kind, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you get out of here. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> All right. Have Bye. a good night. It was nice to talk to you. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. I, I, I don't know how people do it. That's why I have so much respect for people who are parents, because I'm like, I don't know how I'd handle that. Yeah, I mean, get used to it, I guess. Yeah. Huh? But I'm glad you invited me on for this subject, because this is something I feel very, I, I don't know if you can tell my voice, I feel very passionate about feeding my family for cheap. And I'm, I'm I, I don't know, I think I'm good at it. I do it all the time. I invite my friends over to eat. They're like, ah, how can you feed your family for so little? Come and watch. I'm not arguing that you can do great things with a little bit of money, but what I am arguing is that when you start to look at particularly the needs, and we, we, I put that up earlier, particularly the needs of growing children, their nutritional diversity has to be greater than it does for you or I. It has to be in a situation where putting a kid in a situation every day, eat the same thing, or the protein is going to come from rice and beans. I can't see that good for a growing child, but at the same time, we may actually be addressing an issue that's prevalent in a lot of low-income communities, particularly black communities, all over. We may be addressing an issue that deals with, you know, the, the nutritional choices that some parents have to make who are living on that 1200 a month. Because you got to remember, in America, somewhere right now, there is a family for whom that 1200 is a step up from what they were earning. Well, this is what I'm going to say. This is what I'm going to say, just to add on to what I was trying to say earlier, but I don't think I, I obviously, I, I don't think I communicated it very well, is that this, the the foundation of the meal are the ingredients that I gave you, which is generally the rice, the beans, the meat. But I'm talking about fresh vegetables. I'm talking about fresh collard greens. I'm talking about fresh cabbage. I'm talking about peppers, fresh, fresh fruits. I'm not talking about canned fruits. I'm, I'm talking about fresh fruits. This is how me and my daughter. So we do fresh fruits and vegetables, a staple of rice, beans, and fresh fruits and vegetables. How is that not the cornerstone to a, a complete meal by anyone's standard? And I, I challenge you to disagree with me. Because here's the thing. If we're talking about, I agree. We're talk, if we're talking about a lot of those dinners that you talked about, I'm totally on board with you. What I have a hard time with is when you're looking at breakfast and lunch, which is just, just shovel loading carbs. Just shovel loading carbs. That's what I'm looking at you saying. And I'm like, ah. That's a hard, that's a hard sell. With the average American kid, and I can't speak for how it is in Brazil, I can tell you when I was a kid, I had, if I had breakfast in the morning, it was a bowl of cereal or it was a Pop-Tart. Or it was a what? A Pop-Tart? A Pop-Tart? Really? I think I was damn near a teenager before I knew Pop-Tarts existed in the real world. That was not flying in my house. No, nobody. Well, my, point, my point to you, though, is you didn't hear me say you didn't hear me say frosted flakes. You didn't hear me say ramen noodles. You didn't hear me say all this other stuff that a lot of people eat. I'm talking about cooking food for my family. Now you can criticize the food that I cook, but I'm not. I'm also not buying ramen noodles. I, I do just for a little bit of variety, to be honest with you. But I'm not. That's not a staple of our our diet. I'm not buying box macaroni and cheese. I'm not doing that. Like this, these staples of the typical American diet, I don't get that stuff because generally that stuff is more expensive than need be. And I can make it cheaper if I make it from scratch. You make a good point. You do make a very good point as far as the average kid. Because again, I think uh, Leticia and I do come from the position of we got to eat food food. Like, I, I, I thought soda was something that only happened in restaurants. And even then, I didn't get it. I was, again, damn near grown before I realized, wait, you guys buy soda and, like, have it in your house to drink? Because I just, that just wasn't, wasn't on the, that wasn't, that wasn't even a thing for me. For me, it was Kool-Aid that she could control the low level of sugar that was going to go in it and things like that. And I got breakfast, food. 
I got dinner food, I got diverse food. So for me, when I think about food, particularly for growing children, I think about the kind of things that I was able to eat in my home. Like what? Like what? Oh. Uh, everything. Everything. Uh, eggs. You know, diverse eggs, bacon, sausage, maybe. Um, maybe you'll have a fruit cup for one day for, before you go. You'll have fruit. Uh, another day, you might have a fruit shake with bananas, milk, and something else inside. You know, all those small things that make a huge difference. And any kind of canned food is a dollar. So, I mean, again, you're, I can fit all this stuff into my budget. And that's my point to you is like, I didn't go into the weeds and say, I get this specific thing or this other specific thing. I'm telling you what the pillars of the diet are. The pillars, the, 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 the long poles in the tent are the starch, the beans, and the vegetable. Everything around the edges I can fill in. So look at what BK said. Years ago, there was a documentary called Food Stamped about a couple trying to live a healthy lifestyle off food stamps. Even they admitted healthy diets um, are, are harder on low income. And he went on to say the current 1200 stimulus will barely make it for a healthy lifestyle in general, depending on the size of the family over a long period of time. My question is, by the way, is 1200 per household or per adult or is it a cap on two adults? I don't know how that works. Because we might be able to make an argument and find a happy medium. If mom got 12 and dad got 12, then we can say, okay, those, I'm sorry, say that again. It's also 500 per child in the house. Really, with no limit? Yeah, that's my understanding. Hold on, I'm, I'm looking that up. Um, 500 per child limit? Yeah, because that's uh, that's something that we definitely need to look at. The stimulus check for business. I'm looking for a government. I'm looking for a government. Um, okay, let's go with a non-governmental Washington Post. We can debate the legitimacy of the Washington Post another time. Let's say it's a reasonably well-researched paper. Let's see what they got for us. Calculate how much you'll get from 1,200 or more coronavirus stimulus checks. The U.S. government is about to send checks to deposits. Stay with me. Come on. Let's go down. Because I'm looking for the 500. Adjusted growth, 75. Payment fall by five. Married couples get are eligible for 2,400 check as long as their gross in, adjusted gross income is under 150,000. Okay. And then we'll also receive an additional 500 for every child under 17. Yeah, single or so. Okay, okay, that's a that's a reasonable, uh, that's a reasonable, that's a reasonable thing to look at. Okay, if we're looking at yeah, you can you can look at how much you'll get. Um, I'm going to put this in the comment for anybody who wants to see that. But the good news is a lot of people may not even have to have this argument. A lot of people may not even have to debate whether or not it's a good idea and how much they'll have to look at and, and, and how much they're, yeah. Now, going back to, let's see. If we're going to go to what BK said, he, he talked to us a little bit about that documentary. And I found this about food stamped. We might want to watch that in our spare time. Food stamped. Uh, it's a documentary. By the way, you never use real ratings on documentaries because the problem is even world-class documentaries get low ratings because people don't see, I don't know, exploding transformers. And let's see. By Shira Potash and Yoav Potash about food stamps and a couple who take the food stamp challenge and live on a food stamp budget for one week. <laughs> wow. 51 reviews on Amazon gave it four out of five. So this might be worth something. This might actually be worth looking at to find out whether or not it's um, 
whether or not it's a, uh, something they talked about and how how well that goes down. Huh. Hmm. I learned something today. You know, I think the most depressing thing I learned is how much of a privilege it is to grow up in a place where you get to eat food, food, and that becomes your standard. That becomes your your normal, your benchmark. Your normal is actual food and not repetitive, blah, blah, blah. And that's not a dig against you. I'm just saying I, I get that now. I get where. Yeah, you're assuming that it's repetitive, and I'm telling you it's not. Wait, say that again? You're assuming what I'm cooking is repetitive, and I'm telling you it's not. Because there's a hundred different ways to prepare white rice. There's a hundred different ways to prepare chicken. Just because I have chicken and rice a lot of the time and potatoes, there's a hundred different ways to make potatoes. I, I think you're you're. I don't, I don't think you're taking into consideration what I'm telling. You. I'm saying we eat well, we eat very well, and I know it's hard to believe because the arguments, the counter argument to what I'm saying is so prevalent in society. And I'm saying, look, I mean, if I weren't doing it, I wouldn't be as passionate about saying that. No, no, this can be done because I'm doing it, period. I mean, you can argue all you want, but I'm actually doing it. And I have. Well, if you, as the pro wrestlers say, if you're, if you're going to live the gimmick, I got to respect that. I can't look at you and say, hey, you know, he's talking out of the side of his face. I know you well enough to, to not question your honesty. Um, that's hard. That's hard. That's that's just a, uh, yeah, yeah. That's obviously I go over budget sometimes for uh, uh, Easter. I got a leg of lamb. Obviously, a leg of lamb is not going to fit into a fifty dollar budget. Hmm. You see, I'm drinking Pellegrino water right here, right? Pellegrino. Time to time, you get what I'm saying. Like, I, it, let's be reasonable. I, I'm just saying, like, if you have the long poles in the tent. Everything else, you can fit every every other luxury underneath the tent, as long as you got the long poles covered. And that's 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 all I was trying to communicate to you earlier, which you know we kind of debated about it. And that's all I'm trying to communicate now. It doesn't take that much, just a little creativity, a couple YouTube searches on how to make cheap. There, there's there's probably a thousand different videos on YouTube right now. How to feed a family of four on fifty dollars a week? There's probably a thousand of those videos, and they're usually like prepper moms or all these prep. It's usually the prepper crowd that that goes into this, and you know the Midwest family that have like six children and all that. They're proud that they can feed their family for cheap. And if you just look at the videos, I'm not the only one. I I feel like I'm the only one within the black community that's saying this that it can be done because every time I mention it. Even amongst my friends, like, you can't do that. Your daughter's going to starve. No, she's not starving. I mean, she's she was vegetarian, so it was a little easier for me. But it can be done, and it can be done relatively easily without resorting to ramen noodles and Tony the Tiger cereal. Well, I'm just glad that for you and I, because of our, our our situations that where we are professionally, we're not there. Um, for the record, I always want to show people, do I do YouTube? Yes. Am I a YouTuber? No, not really. Um, oh, thank you for that, BK. I'm, I'll have to show them the other things. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show everybody my LinkedIn because what I do is I'm editor, writer, copy editor. Uh, right now, a big chunk of what I've been doing, writing professional resumes for people. I've been writing more resumes now than I have, I can probably say, in the last four or five years of doing this business. Uh, a lot of mine is editing books, editing um, journals, uh, having things translated back and forth between English and other languages. Right now, uh, Resumes are all the rage. Feel free to contact me. Everybody can contact me as well as, as link with me on LinkedIn. My name is Yusef Watif. It's who I really am. And I tell everyone all the time to scroll to the bottom because my resume is fun. It's exciting. It's blah, blah, blah. But that's not where I want you to stop first. Uh, I tell everybody, if you go to my Patreon page, 
the very first thing that I want you to do is scroll down past the actual, this is what I've done, to the part that is cleverly labeled, wait for it to load, Come on, for some reason it's scrolling slow, but the entire world is on the internet now. Recommendations, recommendations are the people who know me professionally who can say, this guy is who he claims to be. This is a man who is someone worth contracting with. Click show more, you can see I have them across several continents with lots of different people. That's what I tell people to look at first. You know, um, and the Patreon, which has been, this is something that, that BK from the Rockies was talking about. The Patreon is where a lot of the things that I do here on, on YouTube are great starting points, great discussion points. I tend to go into a lot of detail. Some of the people here know I can be long-winded. Patreon is where I post the things that are extraordinarily detailed how to get a CPF number in Brazil, how to deal with certain things internationally, how to deal with filing taxes late where I bring in an expert like actually the attorney. Um, today, talking with brother RJ about credit, credit scores, how credit can be adjusted or fixed. These are things that, let's be honest, a lot of people on YouTube aren't really going to sit down and want to watch something like that. But that's where I put things in my, my Patreon. Patreon is where I do a lot of, and let me show you guys some of the published posts that we've done. Credit, how to file taxes late, health kettlebells, music, um, Patreon, uh, steroids, how to manage many wives. Uh, for people who know me, know I'm in uh, Brazil, I have access to the Pimsleur Portuguese course, and I tell people all the time, I'm feel I feel great. Anybody who's on my Patreon who wants that, I can share my Pimsleur Portuguese course with them. I actually have access to where you can get all the Pimsleur courses. So for the people that are on my Patreon, I'm more than happy to uh, to share that with you as well. If I'm not mistaken, you and I are going to be speaking in Portuguese together very soon, right? What? What was that? Hopefully, yes. Very soon. Hopefully, yeah. Okay. You know, and that's something I'm looking forward to. That's something that you know, I, like I said, I'm trying to get you down here to hang out with me for a while. And, uh, oh, last thing I'll show everybody is this is where I am with Patreon as far as when people join me. This is, let's see, here we are. I'm not going to go through reading all the different descriptions, but this is where I reach out to people and I show them what I do. That last level for Arcane membership, I only do a few people with that because it's a lot of hand-holding. It's a lot of professional planning, personal planning, a lot of giving them one-on-one -on -one FaceTime about the things that I've done professionally across different countries and uh, different income streams that I've developed, and I'm glad to be able to do that. Um, and I'll put the, what I'll also do is I'll put the link uh, in, the, in the comment section as well. You know, and, I, and I say that to say this. It's been fun being able to have so many people that I have been able to reach out to me and get a lot of that technical information. The seventh project, seventh project. I'm not sure if I know that name. How long have you been a subscriber here, seventh project? Can you let me know where you found us? Uh, and have you shared this somewhere? There we go. It's always good to have you on. You know, you and I did something that we won't talk about here, but we did something on the Patreon site that uh, I hope has been beneficial to you. That's, that's for people who, if you know, you know. Yes. Ah, there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're on with Brother Art. Welcome. And like I said, everybody, please make sure you you share this somewhere. Share this on your, your Facebook or your, your, your Twitter page. Those things are critically important because that's how um, – that's how we get to meet so many new people. That's how we get to really expand and, and, and share. You got anything you want to wrap up with, Brother Lawrence? Yes, yes. First off, I really want to thank you for inviting me up to talk about this. Because this, I don't know if you could tell from the passion of my voice, this is something that I very, feel very, very strongly about. The, the lost art of home economics. I think it's it's a it's 
it's a skill that needs to be honed in on. It needs to be thought about and taken seriously. And I don't think we give it enough of uh, our attention in today's life. I mean, we focus on our, our professional life. We focus on all this other stuff. But, you know, how to make your home run more efficiently. And eating, in my opinion, eating healthy, cheap, is one of those things that I don't think is given enough attention. So thank you for allowing me to share my thoughts on this. Well, let's back up for a second. You know, there may be people who are watching this who don't know what home ec was. What home? Ec, I was. I think I was in a home economics class. I remember in junior high school, which for me would have been grade. Let me think. Seventh or eighth grade. What did they talk about in home economics? I took. I also took home economics when I was in seventh grade. It talked about the different things about cooking. Um, uh, we did sewing a little bit, like things that you would do around the home to make your home run a little bit more efficient. And I guess maybe I took I took the class a little bit more seriously than my my colleagues because. I've taken a lot of the, not a lot of those lessons, but I've taken some of those lessons and I built upon them and, you know, I'm using them. I remember home economics. I remember there were things, you know, I'll tell you something that, um, that both of my parents reinforced with me. My mother said she always wanted to make certain that the woman I ended up with or women that I ended up with didn't exert undue control over me because I couldn't do things for myself. So whether or not I had access to it, I learned all the kitchen stuff, which was part of my early career. Uh, I learned how to sew. I learned basic functional repair and cleaning of a home, things like that. Even now, hiring a, hiring a maid that comes to clean my house, not during the corona, I'm not that crazy knowing how to say, hey, here's what I'm going to look at for whether or not you've been doing things the right way. All those things matter. All those things matter. All those things matter. It's, Whew. yeah, man, matter of fact, I'm going to have to put that in the, uh, I'm going to have to put that in the description, home economic, home economics class, because it's one of those things that, it really is a lost start, but my question is why? I think that the attention has been focused on so many things outside of the home that I, I think a lot of the attention that I know my mom put into the home that I lived in, uh, you know, they're they're not being, they're not they're not given enough attention. They're just not. I, I don't I don't understand why it's such a hard concept to say you know I can feed I can feed my family healthy for cheaper. I don't. I mean, it's funny that I'm having this conversation with you, but I've had this, I've had the same conversation probably 20 or 30 times with my, with my, my coworkers, some of my friends. So, you know, showing and proving, man. One person, wow. if, if I can show somebody the way, or excuse me, my way, I, I, I consider it a good day. Okay. I think we went a little deeper than I thought we would, but I'm glad to have you. I'm always glad to talk to people who are passionate about the things that, that they believe, you know, and for you to bring that, you know what, maybe you educated some people here to learn some things or now take some time to learn or to teach their children things that they might not have before. Yes. Reasonable statement? Uh, nothing else. I, I mean, I didn't mention all the different foods that I have in my cupboard, you know, I, but, you know, there's, there's plenty. And again, my kids aren't starving. I just want to put that out. <laughs> all right. Hey, everybody, have a good night, and, and thanks for showing up. Love you all, and I hope you all have a great day.